Hi there. Following the announcements at WWDC, I'm going to be doing a hands-on with all the new features within HomeKit for iOS 14 and to show you some of the features they didn't talk about. Hi there and welcome back and my name is John and this channel is dedicated to everything HomeKit news reviews and tutorials. If you're not already a subscriber then hit the subscribe button and also the bell button to be notified about other videos. Now starting with some of the minor changes and also some of the changes that were not mentioned in the keynote. Now the iPad app has got the new layout. For instance, it's got this new sidebar like it's gonna be featured in other apps. Now it's also got the status bar at the top to show you your most focused items you need to look at within a room, for instance, it focuses just on the status bar for that particular room. Now, the other change is tap in the ohm icon and it will show you your home settings, room settings, and you can edit this particular screen. Now, nothing has actually changed in those menus right now, so I'm not going to dive into those. Now, on the iPhone, it's slightly different. Tap in the ohm icon will bring up all the rooms and right at the bottom, you'll find the home settings and room settings. Adding an accessory is a little bit different. It's got a new interface and it allows you to add the accessory. And whilst it is slightly different to add it to room, you still get the options for the rooms that it will suggest automations that this light should be added to. And I think this is particularly useful if you want to quickly add to existing automations. Now, the other change is within the uh, settings of an accessory, you've got this box, which is automations. And this allows you to quickly add those accessories to new automations, and it will suggest them like it does when you set up. Or you can also add a automation directly from the accessory. Now, if you've got a accessory that's already added to existing automations, it'll also show you the automations it's already added to. Now, this is really useful and you also can go in there and alter them directly from the settings within the accessory. And that's a really useful feature. Now, the other thing I want to show you is in control center, you've got all your accessories from your favorites, but you also can navigate to the different rooms and see what's in there. So you can turn things on and off. You can interact with the accessories directly from the control center. Now, this is really useful. Now, the other feature that's changed is adaptive lighting. Now, this is, doesn't appear to be enabled at the moment and you get no options. As you can see within the Apple promo, you get an option to enable adaptive lighting. This looks like that it's not enabled in this beta. And I suspect this will be down to the fact that manufacturers are going to have to make some changes within their firmware to enable it. But in short, what it does, it adapts the lighting depending on the type of day. So in the morning, it will give you a different set of temperatures. To the evening, it will also get you view a different set of temperatures. This will be a useful feature. Now, a number of products, particularly from LifeFX and other manufacturers, have this feature built right in. So it's going to be interesting to see how they adapt their offering in order to compete with Apple. But overall, this is a great win for consumers and a great new feature when it eventually arrives. Now, next up, I want to show you the changes to HomeKit Secure Video. Now, one of the things I want to point out, you still need to be using a HomeKit Hub to use the facial recognition and also the activity zones. And this is because all the processing is done locally on the HomeKit Hub, and this can be either a Apple TV, a HomePod, or an iPad running the latest iOS 14. You simply select the camera and you go into settings. The first thing you'll see is the recording options are no longer in the main menu. They are now hidden behind this menu and they are there to access. However, the two new things that have changed is facial recognition and select activity zones. Starting with facial recognition, you enable it by clicking on this and then you then have got several more options. You use your photos library based on the photos you've identified and you also can share faces with your household. You also can go directly to the photos app and add new names to faces in order for the camera to recognize those faces. At that moment, facial recognition appears to only work within the settings. It doesn't do anything with HomeKit Secure Video or its timeline and it shows you when this particular device last detected that particular face, which in the main, it 
it is pretty useful, but I'm sure this will develop over time, especially when you're using it with a doorbell, as they said in the keynote. The other change is the activity zones. And in this case, I've already created one and I've created it there, but to, but to create an activity zone, all you need to do is click like that and it creates, but you can create some really complicated activity zones if you wanted to do so, which would be particularly useful if you are going to be using it outside, you want to do it around a series of bushes, or you want to be really detailed about the motion zone that wants to be activated. You also can invert them. So everything in that area will be ignored and everything outside will detect motion. Uh, now this appears to be working pretty well. This is what I tested last night. As you can see it's activated when I've gone into the motion zone and it works and it does its job. Now, just to show you that this does work, I'm gonna show you the camera footage now taken from the local storage. As you can see here, I've already walked into the room previously, I've actually waved my hands about and done a silly dance. It's still not activated the motion zones. It's only happened when I've walked into view into that particular motion zone within the camera. So the activity zones seem to be working pretty well within the iOS 14 beta. And this is a really, really, really nice feature that a lot of people are gonna really appreciate. Another new design change is the talk button. The button will now show you when the person on the other end of the camera can hear you. And it also has the option to mute the camera, which is a really nice change. Next up is the changes to Apple TV. As you saw in the keynote, if you've got a HomeKit doorbell and someone comes to your door and rings that doorbell and you're using your Apple TV, it will send you a notification pop-up picture in picture on the screen. This will show you who's at the door. And if it's a familiar face, it will also identify that face and show you it is. You will also get support through HomePod. It will ring through the HomePod. And again, if it's a familiar face, it will announce that person's name. You've also got a control center widget, which allows you to view your cameras, either in picture in picture, or in full screen. Now at the moment it appears it's just cameras at the moment, it's not a fully fledged HomeKit hat. However, this may change down the line, but this is a really useful feature. In the picture itself, it shows you the live view and it also shows you what it's set to within HomeKit Secure Video. So that's the end of this video. To say it is beta one, it is actually pretty stable. I'm using it on two of my devices for the last few hours and I've had no particular issue with any of the apps. Lots of the OnKit features appear to be working, obviously adaptive lighting, not yet, but I think that's down to a manufacturer firmware change that needs to be made. Now, as the betas go on, there may be new icons appear, but they don't appear to be there at the moment. There also may be some cosmetic changes and some further announcements to the facial recognition. Now, if you've liked this video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. Also take the time to subscribe and hit the bell button. Thank you very much. I'll speak to you soon.